Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters, and may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. I just want to do a teaching like uh, starting from the very beginning of how you can develop spiritual discipline for prayer, because this is something that a lot of people lack. And this is the very reason why so many people do not even have a relationship with Jesus. And Jesus is just somebody whom they just hear of from other people, you know, uh, they, don't, they don't know him. They are not intimate with him. And all they know is just to go to church. So, but we know that as disciples of Jesus, we need to know him because it's actually, it's actually a very personal relationship. Jesus Christ himself said that he knows his sheep by name. And that should tell us that he deals with us on an individual level. He doesn't, Jesus doesn't just deal with us on a group level, but he deals with us individually. And our relationship with him is at individual level. You know, it's not a group relationship. There's no, you can have a group relationship with Jesus. In that group, each person is on a personal relationship and uh, how close that relationship is, it's different for every member of that group. Jesus knows you by name and he wants you to know him on a personal level as well. He wants the relationship to be very personal because that is the only way that it's a true relationship. You cannot have a relationship with Jesus just as a member of a group or as a member of the church. And something that I really need to emphasize for anyone who is going on this journey, you know, uh, you need to have your mind made up. So uh, the videos that I'm going to be making, they are all going to be addressing different things. You know, I want to start like from the very beginning, how you start to build your relationship with Jesus. And then the follow up videos they are going to be building up on each other, like for you to keep adding things to your relationship with Jesus slowly, you know, because obviously you have to start from somewhere. You have to start, you know, with one step at a time. You don't just wake up and all of a sudden you're so close to Jesus. It doesn't happen. Like, I remember even my relationship with the Lord, like it has changed a lot over the years. It has changed a lot over the years. And it's not something that happened all of a sudden, but it's something that grew through things that the Lord taught me to do deliberately. And what I want to say is this is not going to work for everybody. This is only going to work for people who are actually going to implement the things that I'm going to be teaching. It's not going to work for somebody who just watches the video and expects things to happen, but it's going to work for people who are going to implement this and who are going to do it with all their hearts. And it's, go it's going to be a very serious journey that the Lord is going to take us through, all of us. You know, I am not where I'm supposed to be, you know. I am also not where I desire to be with the Lord. I also desire to be closer to the Lord. And the Lord has been teaching me a lot of things on how I can draw closer to Him and how we can all draw closer to Him. And those are, the, those are the things that I'm addressing. And I want to say that before you make a decision that this is what you want, you need to count the cost. It's going to be costly. And Jesus already made it clear that anyone who wants to come after him, you must count the cost. Anyone who wants to be his disciple, you need to count the cost. And you know, because if you do not count the cost, you're going to start implementing some of the things and you're, and you're going to do it like a day or two days or three days and then you're going to quit. And then you're going to say that it doesn't work. You're going to say it doesn't work. You cannot draw closer to God. And you're going to keep uh, writing to me, telling me that Rachel, pray for me, for, uh, Rachel, pray for me to draw closer to God. But something that you need to know about drawing closer to God. It's not possible for you to draw closer to God just by somebody else praying for you, praying a prayer for you and saying, 
let this person draw closer to God. You need to be involved. Somebody else's prayer saying, let this person draw closer to God. The only thing that they can pray for you is for God to help you, to, to strengthen you, you know, like to give you more strength, maybe to give you more desire to draw closer to him. But at the end of the day, it's you to make a decision that this is what you want. And when you make a decision, you act on it. So drawing closer to Jesus is action. You know, it's not just a prayer request you present to somebody and all of a sudden you just find that you are so close to the Lord. It's not possible. You have to act on it. You know, even the word of God says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So how do you draw near to God? You know, it's you. It's not somebody who's going, who's going to just pray for you, but you must take the step and draw near to God. And then God will also take his steps and draw near to you. And at the end of the day, you and God are going to be close in a close relationship, which is actually God's desire, you know, and which is actually what we were created for. You know, we were not created to be separated from the Lord. We were not created to live our lives far from the Lord, but we were created to be so close to the Lord in deep intimacy with him, even when we're still here on the earth. And that is the reason why you are going to find that those moments when you are truly in the presence of the Lord, you know, when his presence truly manifests during your prayer time, you know, like when you now move from, you know, cause prayer is at different levels. So when you start to pray and then now you get in, in the spirit, you get in the spirit and you get connected to the spirit of God. And you're going to find that that is the place where you're going to find so much peace, joy, like you're going to know that nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Like as long as you're with God, everything is okay. You know, that's because we were created for his presence. And that is the reason why anything else that you try to use to satisfy your soul here on the earth is going to leave you so empty because you were not created for that. In the past, there were times when I would spend my entire day on social media. And I remember at the end of the day, I wouldn't feel happy. It would actually leave me so anxious. It would leave me so anxious. It would leave me with a sadness deep within, you know, and it would leave me with a hole, like I would, I would feel void. But on the contrary, on the days when I spend like my entire day in the presence of God praying, you know, maybe I'm fasting and praying and I just seclude myself and I start to seek the Lord and I spend the entire day in the presence of the Lord. You know, at the end of the day, I'm not going to feel anxious and sad and all those things that I feel when I spent my days on the social media, like the entire day. Instead, like when I spent my entire day in the presence of the Lord, I found that at the end of the day, I was filled with so much peace, so much joy, so much contentment, so much fulfillment that leaves you like longing for more of God's presence. And I've come to know and learn that truly this is what we were created for. And that is the reason why we find so much satisfaction only in his presence. And before you are, before you are able to get close to the Lord, you know, prayer may seem like something so undesirable, you know, uh, even when you hear somebody else talking about God's presence being desirable, you know, I remember I used to experience that it may seem like it's not true or, you know, like you don't really understand whatever they're talking about. But as you build up on your relationship with God, there's going to be a time when the presence of God is, be is going to become so addictive, so irresistible, you know, like you're just going to want to be with Jesus like all the time, you know, and the Lord is going to take you there. So the very first uh, thing, of course, that a person who wants to build a relationship with Jesus, the very first thing that they need to do is obviously to repent of their sins because you cannot continue deliberately living in sin 
and yet expecting to build a relationship with Jesus because Jesus hates sin. So when you're at the beginning of your journey with the Lord, obviously it's not every sin that you might be aware of. You know, you're not going to be aware of each and every sin because the, the closer that you start to get uh, with Jesus, the more that the Holy Spirit is going to shine his light on your life. And then it's going to make you realize how depraved you are, you know, how much you are in sin. Even when before, you know, before you came to the light of the Lord, you thought that you were righteous. But what happens is when you, when you come to the light of the Lord, when you draw closer and you, and you look, you take a look at your reflection, it's just going to make you realize how depraved you are, you know. It's going to make you realize how helpless you are without the Savior. It's going to make you realize just how much you need him. And because you realize how much you need him, it's going to make you to want to stay close because you know that you actually need Jesus. Not only do you want him, but you're going to realize that you actually need him. You're going to realize that it's necessary for you to stay close to Jesus because as long as you are not close to him, you know, you're going to realize how easy it is for you to fall in sin because you're going to realize that your power doesn't come from your own, from yourself, but your power comes from Jesus. He's the one who gives you victory over the world. So the very first thing is to repent of your sins. Don't deliberately stay in sin. Sin is repulsive to God. The Bible says that God's ears are not deaf to your prayers. You know, his eyes are not blind that he cannot see you. And his ears are not deaf to your prayers. You know, many people keep wondering, like, I keep praying, I keep praying, but, you know, God doesn't answer prayer. Nothing is happening. God doesn't answer my prayer. But the Lord says that it's not as if my hand is too short to save. And it's not as though my ears are too deaf to hear your prayers. But it is your sins that have separated you from the Lord. And the word of God says that your sins have made God to turn his face from you. God hates sin. It is repulsive to him. And when we deliberately stay in our sin, we are rejecting the Lord. We may say that we want Jesus. We want to draw close to Jesus. But if we deliberately stay in our sins, it's more like we are publicly announcing and saying that you don't want the Lord Jesus. You know, you choose your sin. It's a choice that we have to make. If you know that this is truly what you want, like the most, this is truly what you want the most, then you're going to do everything possible to get there. You know, it's just like somebody who wants to lose weight or somebody who wants to achieve a certain goal. You know, I, I see a lot of people sacrificing and going to extremes just because they want to lose weight or just because they want to stay fit. You know, I have seen people like, I have seen people exercising and jogging out on the street, like at 5 a.m. I have seen people doing that several times. And if somebody who is doing something that has nothing to do with God, if they're able to get the, to master the discipline to exercise or to meditate or to do whatever they wake up early in the morning to do, then what about you who even has the backing of the Holy Spirit? You know, if you truly make up your mind that this is what you want, then it means that God is going to help you to have the spiritual discipline in order for you to follow through with what you want to do, you know, like with the steps that you want to take to follow him. So it's about what you want the most. If getting close to the Lord is what you want the most, then you're going to get there. If this is truly what you want, then you are going to be uh, disciplined. You're going to make sure you're disciplined. You know, for some reason, people are more disciplined to the things that have nothing to do with God, you know, like the things of the world. If they tell you you have to be at work at eight, a lot of people are able to be at work at eight, at least for most of the days. And if they tell you that, you have to be in class, you have to be at school at this time. 
you know, people make it at that time and they do it every day and it becomes a lifestyle, you know, it becomes normal for you. But when it comes to spiritual discipline for prayer, you know, people are more relaxed. People are much more relaxed. Like when they say, okay, my prayer time is at this time, they, they can't keep it. They can't keep it. That's because they trivialize God. They trivialize uh, their relationship with Jesus. There are times when it's beyond your control. You know, like you cannot make it for prayer time because of something very serious. And of course, you still have to make up for it. But often, like people just take it lightly and say, okay, I'm going to do it later. And they end up procrastinating like for an entire year and years, you know, until it's just like a whole life, a whole lifetime of procrastinating. So it's really important for you to have your mind made up that this is what you truly want. I remember the time when I was studying my relationship with Jesus, you know, the very first day when God, God truly gave me a lot of hunger for him, you know, that very first day. And I decided that I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to seek the Lord until I find him. And I made up my mind and I said today, I'm going to wake up at night and pray. And that very day for the very first time I woke up and I prayed. That's because I truly made up my mind and I never turned back and I continued to seek him until I found him, until the Lord gave me what I wanted. So you need to make up your mind and stick you know, you need to respect prayer time. You need to set a prayer time. Like what is the prayer time that is most suitable for you? It's different for everyone. You know, you need to set aside at least time when you're not, when you're not going to be limited, you know, like whereby you can have, you know, like you can have several prayer times in a day. For example, you can wake up uh, maybe an hour earlier than the usual time you wake up to prepare for your work. You can start waking up like an hour earlier than the, than the usual time and then maybe like spend an hour in prayer before you start your day. And that's understandable, you are going for work. So it's understandable that you have said, okay, I'm going to give myself uh, like a maximum of one hour every morning. That's understandable. But apart from that, like it's necessary for us to to set aside time whereby we're truly going to just surrender to whatever the Lord wants. You know, like what is the time that you are most free? Is it during the day? Is it in the night? You know, set your prayer time, have a prayer time at that time, you know, and say, this is my prayer time. And at this time, I'm just going to forget everything else. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay attention to my phone or whatever. I'm going to put my phone aside because the phone is obviously one of the biggest distractions that uh, everybody has. So you put your phone aside and then you just focus, you focus on the Lord, you know, and without any time limitation, you know, like whatever the spirit of God wants. And for some reason, you know, when you say like, oh, you leave it to the spirit of God, a lot of people usually get scared and say, oh, you know, they think like it means it's going to take hours and hours and hours and they're going to get tired, you know, because um, mostly as humans, we do not trust the Lord. You know, we don't trust the Lord. We usually think like if you leave it to God, then things are just going to go bad, you know. So m most times, like we love to be in control. We love to be in control. We love to be in charge. We don't want to say, I'm just going to leave it up to God, you know, but God is good. God knows that at the end of the day, we're only human. The Lord knows that at the end of the day, uh, we're human and we get tired. I remember, I remember the time when the Lord, I remember the very day, actually it was the very day when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And now this was in the night when the Lord Jesus started to speak to me and to my sister. And then we started to pray with my siblings. And I remember the Lord started to uh, speak uh, prophetic messages through us like for maybe like two hours, you know, and it was in the night. But anyway, it was for a long time. It could have been like two hours or three hours. I'm not sure. But all I remember is that it took a long time. But I remember at the end of it all, I remember that the Lord said to us that 
okay, go to bed and rest now. I know that you are just human and you're tired. So the Lord cares, you know, he cares. It's not like the Lord is expecting us to be like a machine or something like that. But the Lord cares. He knows we're human and he knows our limits. He knows how far we can go. And he knows that we get tired as well, you know. So a relationship with Jesus is not a punishment, you know. A relationship with Jesus is a loving relationship between you and your God, you know, a God who truly loves you and cares about you, who created you and he understands what you can and cannot do. So the Lord is going to lead you and he's going to help you to be able to pray. But you need, you need to be the one to set that time that you're going to be able to like every single day. You know, it's not a once off thing, but you need to have a time like every single day. This is the time for just me and Jesus. You know, like this is the time for me and Jesus. I'm not giving the Lord like, Lord, you only have 10 minutes, you know, but I'm actually giving the Lord a lot of time and saying, and saying, Lord, do whatever you want, you know, and, and then you pray, you know, and when you're done, you're done. You know, it doesn't mean that it has to be a lot of hours, but when you are done, you're done. But at least you give the Lord a lot of time. And then when you set your prayer time, you need to make sure that, you keep to it every single day. You need to make sure that it's every day, you know. You, it's very important to be consistent because when you get consistent with doing something, it becomes a habit. And from being a habit, it becomes a lifestyle, you know. It becomes like part of your life. Just like people who, who train, you know, who do exercises, you know, like uh, they go jogging or whatever exercise they do. When they have done it like for months, it becomes part of their lives. Like even when they don't do it, they feel strange. And I've come to know that this is with everything that you do in life. It becomes a habit. You form a habit. And you need to form a habit of prayer if you want to draw closer to Jesus. You need to form a habit of prayer. So you need, to, when you have set the time, now this is why you apply the discipline and say no matter what, this is my prayer time, I need to pray. You know, and Satan is going, you know, this is something that you should expect. As soon as you truly embark on a journey to truly seek the Lord, you need to expect a lot of opposition from the enemy. And a lot of people start to wonder like, oh, before I was praying, I was not experiencing this and that. That's because you were, you were already in his hands. Now that he's seeing that he's losing you, that's when he's so desperate and he's going to come after you and try to grab you back. Like he's going to use everything that he can but it's going to require a lot of spiritual discipline it's just about thinking like do i really want to achieve this you know you want to the goal is to get closer to the lord so if you start to skip your prayer time how are you going to achieve that goal you're going to find that this year 2023 it's going to come to an end and you're still as far from the lord as you were last year so if you're truly serious that this is really what you want, then you need to make sure you keep to your prayer time. Don't skip prayer. You know, don't be indisciplined. You know, you don't skip work whenever you want. You know, therefore, why should you skip prayer whenever you want and say, I'm going to pray when it's most suitable? Then it means that you, you haven't truly made up your mind. You know, you haven't truly decided that this is truly what you want. But for people who are truly serious, that they want to seek and find the Lord, because the Bible says that he, the Lord is going to be found by all who seek. The Bible says everybody who asks receives, everybody who seeks finds. And the Bible also says that you will seek me and find me in the day that you seek me with all your heart. So the day you are going to seek the Lord with all your heart, and to continue seeking him, know that you're going to find him. That is assured because God doesn't lie. Everything he says, you know, he cannot say something that he cannot do. So when you have set your prayer time, make sure you do it every single day. One thing about prayer, prayer is not something you can do like you pray today, you pray two days later, or you pray three days later. It's not going to work. The very day that you are going to skip even just one single day. I'm telling you, it has a lot 
of spiritual damage on your spiritual life. That's something I have come to realize. Just that time, even just one single day that you're going to say, I'm skipping my prayer today, I'll pray tomorrow. A lot of damage is done to you spiritually by the enemy. He closes up all the gaps to make sure that you, uh, on that next day, you're not going to be able to go back where you were, you know, because you have moved from the place where God positioned you to be. But you have really come to know that once you skip even just a single day in prayer, just for you to be able to get back on your feet, it's going to be difficult. You, even when you're going to manage to pray the next day, you're going to find that you are not where you were. It's more like you are, you're starting afresh. It's more like you took a step backward. So how are you going to reach the goal, you know, where, and reach where the Lord is waiting for you? If you keep walking backwards, you're not going to do it. The Lord has truly taught me not to skip even just a single day. It's very, very dangerous. It's very fatal. Spiritually, a lot of damage is done to you. Skipping your, your prayer time, don't do it. If you have said, I'm going to be spending this time with the Lord, don't take it casually. Don't take it casually and say, I'll skip it today, I'll pray tomorrow. Just know you, if you keep, you can, if you do it once, you know, and, and the next day you are able to pray, you know, if you are not going to be where you were supposed to be that day. You took a step backwards or you took two steps backwards. And if you make it a habit to, uh, to be skipping your prayer time, you cannot find the Lord. I can assure you, if you make a habit of skipping your prayer time and only praying when you want, you are going to keep saying, I have been seeking the Lord for years, I cannot find him. I'm telling you, consistency is extremely, extremely important when it comes to drawing close to the Lord. Consistency is very important. You're going to find that if you, if you never skip your prayer time, if you develop the spiritual discipline to respect your prayer time, you know, God says that he who honors me, I will honor. But when you just casually skip your prayer time, you're not honoring the Lord. You are dishonoring the Lord. So how is he going to honor you? You are simply showing that Jesus is not the one who is important to you. You have an appointment with the Lord and the Lord is waiting for you on that appointment. When you tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to be having my prayer time every evening, you know, and then you go, away you know like you don't pray you say i'll pray tomorrow you know i'm just feeling too lazy today and the lord was waiting for you you know you are dishonoring the lord the lord is not going to honor you but on the contrary if you develop the discipline and stick to what you what you promise you know like what you told the lord you you said to the lord lord i'm going you know there are times when when it's necessary for you to change your schedule maybe you say that lord i'm going to be having my prayer time in the evening and then you realize like oh this evening like something came up beyond your control something is going to happen or maybe you have something beyond your control there's nothing wrong with you having a prayer time earlier you know jesus is not a machine you know he's He's not a machine, but he is able to, to understand us. You know, he, he created intelligence. He, he is intelligent, actually much more than any human being. You can, you can still pray earlier. God understands and he's going to see like, oh, you, you, you're still honoring him. You know, so it's not like it's rigid. If you just said, I'm going to be praying at, at 10 p.m., then it's 10 p.m. You can't pray earlier. No, you can't. You can pray earlier. There are times when you can actually say, oh, uh, I think I'll be tired by the usual prayer time. Let me pray earlier. You're still honoring the Lord and it's not going to affect your spiritual life. But when you say, oh, I'm not going to pray, I'll pray tomorrow. I'm telling you, you are going to regret that decision. When it comes to drawing close to the Lord, spiritual discipline is absolutely important. So... The other thing that I want to say, like at the very beginning of your 
walk with the Lord. It's about learning to spend adequate time in prayer. You know, I know it's very, it's something that is very difficult at the very beginning because uh, one thing about prayer is many people don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray actually. Even people who have been spending hours and hours in prayer, like we really don't know how to pray. It is the Holy Spirit who helps us to pray. It is the Lord who helps us to pray. Even I come to the Lord and I tell the Lord, Lord Jesus, we don't know how to pray. I want to pray, help me to pray. Lord Jesus, I don't, I want to praise you, but I don't know how to praise you, you know, and the Lord always comes through. And so we don't know how to pray. So how are you going to spend a lot of time in prayer? It's very necessary, you know. If you want to draw close to the Lord, you cannot be spending five minutes in prayer and say, oh, this is my prayer time for today. You are never going to draw close to the Lord. It's just like with a human friend. I always give this example. That human friend whom you spend a lot of time with, eventually they're going to become your best friend. But that one whom you, whom you rarely see, you know, you just say, hello, you know, how can they be close to you? They can't be. In the same way, the more time that we spend with the Lord, the closer that we get with him. The more time we spend with the Lord, the more he reveals to us who he is and we begin to know him, we begin to know his character, to understand him, you know, so that he knows us and we know him, we are intimate with him. So it's absolutely necessary for you to spend a lot of time in prayer. Some people give the excuse and say, oh, Jesus say, don't, don't be like the Pharisees who pray long prayers. And I have a video where I was talking about that in detail, where I actually said, the Lord was talking about hypocrisy. He wasn't talking about the people who truly want to spend a lot of time with the Lord because they want to draw closer to the Lord. The Lord himself, Jesus, he used to spend like an entire night with God. And even the Spirit of God, even now, like when, when you begin to, uh, to spend time in prayer and you begin to pray more and more and more, what, the, what is going to happen is that the Holy Spirit is going to actually want, it's, the Holy Spirit is going to make you want to spend more time in prayer. It's going to happen. Like I'm telling you, I was somebody who, who never loved prayer. Like it was a burden. And I remember the very first time when I started to seek the Lord, it was very difficult. Even just 10 minutes in prayer, it seemed like hours. But the Lord started to draw me closer and closer and closer and closer until his presence became addictive. You know, his, the Lord's presence, it becomes so addictive. It becomes, you know, the place where you want to be. You know, you want to be with the Lord. And I'm telling you, like, you start to feel like everything else, you know, you, you feel like it's an inconvenience. You, feel, you start to feel like everything else is an inconvenience, actually. Like, what you want is to be with the Lord, you know. It, that's real, like that happens, that happens, you know, and it is only the Lord who does that, not our own power, you know, nothing we can brag of. But that is what the Lord is going to start doing to you. So the more time you spend with the Lord, the more time that you are going to want to spend with the Lord, because Jesus is good, you know, and Jesus is good. Jesus is good. And you're going to realize who he is and you're going to realize what a gift Jesus is to us, you know. And you're going to want to be with him. You're going to, be, to want to be with God. You're going to want to be in God's presence. But this is not going to happen if you spend five minutes in prayer and say, oh, no long prayers, you know. How are you going to, to get to know him? You know, you can't it's absolutely necessary for you to spend a lot of time in prayer. No wonder even the, the word of God says that my house shall be known as the house of prayer. Who, how is it a house of prayer? It means there are always people who are praying in the house of the Lord. And the Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means that we are actually the house of God. 
And God says that my house shall be known as a house of prayer. And you are God's house. And he says that his house shall be known as a house of prayer. That should tell us something. It's not just a physical temple, but the true house of God is a human being who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. That is the house of the Lord. And the Bible says it shall be known as a house of prayer. That means that God's children, they are going to be spending a lot of time in prayer because they want to be with their father, you know, you, it's okay like if you're not there yet, but this is why we are here, like studying over and taking one step at a time. But I'm telling you, there's going to be a time if you, be, if you get consistent with the Lord, there's going to be a time when you're going to actually just want to be with the Lord. Like his presence is just going to become addictive. Like that is where you want to be, nowhere else. You know, and if you just say, I'm going to spend two minutes in prayer, five minutes in prayer, you're never going to get there. I remember the time when I started to seek the Lord at the beginning. I actually had to learn the spiritual discipline of staying on my knees. Because as soon as you get down on your knees, you feel like getting up and going to do something else. Because it feels like everything else is better than the Lord. You know, that is because you don't love the Lord yet. You know, you love the Lord to some degree, yes. Of, of course, that's why you even uh, set time and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray, you know, but you're not yet in love with the Lord. And it's not, some, it's not something that I'm saying to condemn anyone, but I'm saying this in order for you to realize that there's a place where the, the Spirit of God can get you and it's not instant but it's going to happen as long as you're consistent. And that happened to me as well. You know, as soon as I kneel down, I just want to get up. I just want to get up. You know, when I'm done with, with prayer and say I'm done with prayer for today, I, I would even be so happy, like, oh, now I can go and do my own things. You know, prayer is a burden. And that's okay because that is at the beginning. And I remember something that I had to do, like for me to learn the discipline of staying uh, on my knees regardless of how i'm feeling i remember at the beginning i even used to set to set a an alarm i would set an alarm for like 30 minutes mostly that's what i used to do i remember at the beginning because i was learning to pray and i told myself like okay i want to start spending a lot of time with the lord so how do i make sure that i'm not spending less than 30 minutes at a time in prayer because I wanted to learn to pray a lot. And then I would set my, my watch, you know, to 30 minutes. So it would sound the alarm after 30 minutes. But, you know, of course, normally you're just supposed to be there and spend time with the Lord. But that, to be honest, that truly helped me, like to learn to be disciplined. And I would truly recommend it for anybody who is struggling, like with staying down on their knees. I think like that can help you because I remember I did that for some time and in the end like I didn't even need to I didn't need to set a timer anymore because it became normal because one thing with prayer is the more you pray the easier it gets for you to pray so somebody who prays a lot it's easy for them to pray you know it gets easier and easier and easier so eventually you're going to find that you don't even need to set a timer, you know, just to teach your flesh to be subdued, you know, and it's something that helped me and that's why I'm recommending it. It helped me to set a timer and tell myself that I'm, I'm not, as long as it hasn't gone off, I'm not going to get off my knees. I know that this is less than 30 minutes. I want to learn to, to stay down on my knees. I cannot always listen to my flesh that tells me when it's just five minutes into prayer and my flesh says that, oh, it's now time for you to go and do this and that and that. If you keep listening to your flesh, your flesh will grow and grow and grow and subdue your spirit. So that's why it was very necessary for me to set a timer. And it taught me spiritual discipline of staying down on my knees. And eventually, like, it became normal. 
for me to spend a long, a long time in prayer because I started increasing. And during that time, I remember I used to ask the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, I truly want to stay in your presence. Lord, help me to just lose myself in your presence and to just lose count of time. And I remember eventually me who had to set a timer just for 30 minutes. Eventually, I remember I started to spend like even three hours in prayer. And I would feel like it's just been like maybe 30 minutes. And then when I, when I look at my watch, that's when I would realize that three hours had gone by you know, when I'm done with prayer and I look at my watch and then that's when I realize three hours has gone by and, you know, the Lord's presence starts to become normal. It starts to become addictive. It starts to become the place where you want to be. So discipline is something that you cannot ignore when it comes to walking with the Lord. You really need discipline. You can be disciplined for school. You can be disciplined for work. So why can't you be disciplined? for prayer, it means that you are trivializing it. So, but if you truly want to get close to the Lord this year, uh, start implementing all these things that I talked about and everything else that the Holy Spirit is going to start to teach you because you're going to find that when you start to spend the time with the Lord, the Holy Spirit is our true teacher, you know, not a human being. And even the things that I'm teaching you, I'm only, teaching you the things that the Holy Spirit has taught me on my own journey with the Lord. And the Lord is going to start guiding you more personally. You know, he's going to start guiding you more personally on your journey with him. So don't feel overwhelmed and don't feel like you will never get close to the Lord. Start taking these steps that I have talked about, you know, making up your mind and setting a, a, a prayer time. You know, being disciplined enough not to skip your prayer time because you're honoring the Lord and the Lord is going to honor those who honor him. You know, stick to your prayer time. You know, like I have already explained, don't skip a day. It's very, very dangerous, extremely dangerous. It's not even something to trivialize, to skip a day and stay a day without prayer. It's extremely dangerous. I don't know how to emphasize this. This is one of the number one killers of people's prayer lives. Uh, people don't just wake up one day and then all of a sudden they, you know, somebody who used, to, uh, who used to pray and spend a lot of time in prayer, then one day they just wake up and they can't pray. No, it starts with one single day of skipping prayer. The next day they find that they are weaker. So the next day, now they don't desire the prayer because it was so hard for them to pray last time. Then they skip prayer. Then it gets harder. Then eventually they find that they haven't prayed in a month. Like all they do is just five minutes prayers, you know. And then it seems like a burden all over again. You know, you are taking several steps backwards. How are you going to achieve your goal? The goal is to draw near to the Lord. And drawing near to the Lord is practical. It's actual steps. That's why he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It's a two-way thing. You cannot just tell someone and say, pray for me to draw near to God. It means that you're just expecting God to just pull you. But what the Bible says is you draw near to him and then he draws near to you. It's two people making a deliberate effort to make that relationship work, you and Jesus. Like you make your deliberate effort. You know, it's not going to happen accidentally. A relationship with Jesus is never accidental. Drawing close to God, you know, the very place where you are in your relationship with God is not by mistake that you are there. It's a decision that you have made. You know, it's a decision that you have made, whether consciously or unconsciously, through the steps that you have taken or not taken. If you are near God, it's because you took several steps deliberately to draw you closer to the Lord. And if you are far from the Lord, it's because you haven't taken that deliberate effort to seek the Lord. So it's a very deliberate thing, very deliberate thing. And discipline, just like the way you choose to report to work every day, the, the way you choose, you choose to go to school every day, you choose to come and spend time in prayer. 
you know, you spend time in the presence of the Lord. And all these things that I have um, mentioned, you also need to read the Bible. You know, you need to make sure that you're reading the Bible because that is the only way you're going to know more about God. You can't just be coming and praying and praying and praying, but you don't read the Bible. It's, uh, it's very important for you to know the Word of God. So sp uh, spend time reading the Word of God, but don't trivialize your prayer time and say, I won't pray today. It's very dangerous for your spiritual journey. So just implement these things that I talked about and be consistent. Do it every single day. And we're going to continue from where I have left off next time. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless you and may his peace be with you all now and always. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.